I think I might have gone into a blood rage. Oh, God. What did I do last night? What the hell am I wearing? What the... Oh, God. Never again. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Regrowth. As you can see, I, uh... Completed that promise of the Elementium armor. Yeah, I, uh, I don't think this is a good look for me. Plus, it's not as protective as the Terra Steel. Has the advantage of shooting off little fairies to counterattack whenever you're hit by something. But, um, yeah. And, um, we have a blood altar. Well, we have the superstructure of a blood altar. Strictly, this is more than what is necessary. Um, all that you need is the lines for the runes and the arrangement of the pillars and these blocks that go on top of them, which we don't have all of yet. Some of them we're going to have to farm up. But this is kind of a fully assembled and decorated blood altar structure that we will be upgrading and turning into a working area as we go. Also, you can see that Young little Jimmy has popped out of his punishment time portal, and we will uh, be making use of him. And, yeah. So, today we will be doing blood magic, but we will also be setting up some thermionic fabricators. Ah, oh, yes, and you can see that um, I upgraded my Sojourner Sash to Globe Trotter. It is the same thing, but faster and higher and better. I normally don't like it because I find it's too... It's actually a little bit too fast. But this map ended up with a lot of walking around, so I think it's worth it. As you can see, I just have stacks and stacks of things cooking. I've got... Um, a stack of quartz chips that's done. The diamonds are cooking. I'm going to make a couple stacks of golden ones. That should be all well and good. Now, these thermionic fabricators. We are going to need them to make the electron tubes that we are going to need for applied energistics. The thing about thermionic fabricators is they constantly draw electricity. Not much. Not once they're fully heated up. But they do constantly draw a little. Most people make intricate systems to automate them, but I don't think I'm going to bother. I have enough energy going on that I can just leave them on, I think. Let's open up the maintenance hatch. Yeah, other nice thing about these mechanism cables is they can coexist with microblocks, so I don't have to interrupt my lighting. And yes, you can see here... Yes, you saw how it was the green stuff inside was empty before, and now it's full up. That's their power indicator. Very nice. Subtle, but effective. All in all, I quite like them. They aren't as cool as the Buildcraft ones, though, sadly. Yes. No recipe. The Thermionic Fabricator needs to be supplied with a little bit of glass. I'll just grab three whole stacks here. Or you can put in sand, but it takes more RF to melt it, I believe. Yes, must provide it into here. And now you see that line there, and it is... Once we give it a recipe, it'll start heating up and melting the glass, and it will make liquid glass that it uses in the recipe. And we are going to need three different types of electron tubes, I do believe. Well, let's look it up. Uh, processor. These are the three things that we are looking to make. The calculation, engineering, and logic processors. We are going to need stacks and stacks and stacks of these to get into AE. So to make the circuits that are kind of the intermediary part of them, we're going to need electron tubes. And for that, we are actually going to need pure Certus Quartz. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to need to make some sort of purification system for Certus Quartz. For the diamond ones, though, 
we are just going to need these diamantine electron tubes. That's easy. That's just lots of diamonds. Just grab a whole... St yeah, let's make a, like, a stack's worth. Doop. Doop. Doop, 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 doop. Doop. And now you see it's heating up. And so long as that recipe is programmed in there, it will try and maintain temperature unless we give it a redstone signal. And maintaining temperature is going to cost RF constantly. Yes, and you see it's actually heating up all the way. I'm not sure why. And apparently it only makes four at a time. If I want more, I have to... Yeah. Well, oh well. Let's get all of these thermionics heated up and let's see how much RF that is going to cost. It's not much. It's like a couple RF per tick per. No? What does logic take? Yeah, it takes golden electron tubes. It is... Oh, okay. There it goes. Okay. So, the other one we need pure Certus Quartz for. Pure. Pure Certus Quartz is going to be a little bit interesting. See, to make purified Certus Quartz, first you just run Certus itself through something like a crusher. That'll get you powder. You combine that power with sand and you get Certus Quartz seeds. And in fact, you'll get one seed, you, you'll get two seeds per powder, so it's a way of effectively ore doubling. Yes, and you see it's used for a bunch of other things as well. But there it is. Now, just taking this seed, I'll show you. Just taking this seed, we can process this into pure crystal. All you need to do is you need to just physically drop it into water. And it will very, very slowly grow. Oh, well, it will grow if you don't have hopper hawks nearby. What the heck grabbed it? It must be... Yeah, it must have been this thing. Anyway. If I put that in an area that um, didn't have hopper hawks covering it, they would sit in the water and they would very slowly grow. And I mean very slowly. We are talking like the processing would take an hour. Real time. To speed that up, we are going to need to make crystal growth chambers. Accelerators. We don't have chambers in this pack. That is going to take fluix quartz. Fluix crystal. Fluix is relatively easy. All we need to do is we need to make some charged Certus Quartz. Let's see. Ah, yes, of course, the recipe is modified in this pack. It's just some steel plates, some control circuits, and some refined steel. Okay. Yeah, these control circuits are just effectively... Um, yeah, it's a processing chain where you make these basics and you use that to make the advanced and you use that to make the next tier. It's kind of the same. Nor normally, in mechanism, you just make those in a, me in a metallurgic infuser the same way as an atomic alloy, but it's a little bit more complex in this pack. Anyway, that would all take a little bit of a while. And there are other things I want to get cooking while we work on that. So, let's start the other thing we're going to be working on today. Today, we have a blood altar to get started on. Oh my, yes. This requires a little bit of everything, you see. It requires a witchery circle to charge up the attune stone. You need to be able to make thaumium. You need to be able to make a witchery altar and a runic altar. It's... A little bit of everything from all the other magic packs, indicating that this is the higher tier of magic. Blood altar. Ooh. And I believe that was a quest. Mm-hmm. Ah, yes, the way the world works, I did this. 
I, I need to kill another Wither, apparently, to get that Guardian of Gaia quest completed. I'll just be doing that off screen because the Wither is frankly boring. Ah, this one. So, it's just on a treasure hunt. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe the treasure is secret and buried, but I looked all around and I was never able to find it. Anyway. Any, anyway. <laughs> Still haven't turned in all those. Here. The way the world bleeds. Oh, it wants me to make the sacrificial knife first. Okay. Well, how do we make sacrificial knife in this pack? It's just an Arthana in a mana pool. Okay, that's easy. Okay, we just take that and we mana it up. Boop. Sacrificial knife. <laughs> just a prick of the finger will suffice. Okay, and now I believe, yes, because we have the altar, Soul Chunk Claimer. That's from Sanguimancy, I do believe. Yes, and we need to be in the Soul Network Dimension, whatever that means. I've never gone to the Soul Dimension, I think. So, the Blood Altar block itself just goes right here. And the rest of this structure, you can make... Th there are guides you can find on the wiki just for how you need to lay out the runes. And you can more or less connect them just by building circles of stairways between them and, you know, blocks and things like that. It, it kind of naturally pushes you towards this ziggurat shape. And I kind of went for a buried-in-the-dirt aesthetic where some bits of it are higher than others and such like. It's not perfect, but meh. Anyway. So. The first thing we need to make is our blood orb. And to make a weak blood orb, we need to take a diamond and we need to treat it with some blood. Now, fortunately, despite being a robot, I am in fact entirely filled with the blood of orphans. Yeah. Yeah. How's that for a design choice? Don't look at me, I'm not the one who did it. I know they're orphans, though. They told me they were orphans. No, I'm not actually sure how much blood that is. It is not showing up in Wayla. So, to view how much blood that is, I would need a divination sigil. And for that, I would need a blood orb. So we're just going to have to kind of guess for the moment. Because I lost count. So let's just fill the altar up. Yes, this blood that we are making is kind of the base resource of blood magic. This is life essence. It can be used to infuse items. It can be used to power spells. We are going to need buckets and buckets and buckets of it. And right now, the only way I have of getting it is pokey 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 myself. Anyway, that looks like enough for the blood orb. Let's just grab a diamond. And let us bloody it up. Goes in there. You see it should. It should. It is. Why are there no particles? There should be particles. It looks like the blood is slowly draining. Did I read that right? Yeah, it's just a tier one. Hmm.
with a diamond. Shouldn't take that long. Ah, okay, there it goes. It just took a little bit longer than I expected, and uh, apparently... Oh, you know what it is? I turned off potion particles, because I didn't want it flying around my own face. I guess that turns it off for blood magic, too. Oh, well. You, you could see the blood kind of slowly draining. Anyway, blood orbs link you up to a blood network. If I feed this thing blood, it will go into my personal blood network, and I can use it for spells and machines and stuff like that. Blood will kind of be wireless, with these blood orbs being the insertion point. And the higher tier blood orb you have, the more blood you can store. And also you need higher tier blood orbs to do some things. Anyway. Whenever you make a new blood orb, the first thing you need to do is you need to take it in your hand and you need to play with it. Always play with your orbs as soon as you get them. Just right-click it. it. It saps a little of your life, and now it is bound to me. So it knows to put the blood in my network. You can see if I put it away here. You can see the blood slowly draining into it. Anyway. To make the divination sigil, we just need to combine it with a slate and some glass. A slate is relatively easy. I just need to make... I just need to take some smooth stone and I need to treat it with blood. I'm actually going to grab a whole ton of these and I'm going to make a chest over there. And I think I might... Eh, let's not have it on the altar itself. Storage can just be, like, right over here. Okay. Let's take a couple of those. Let's actually put our blood orb away. Okay. Put a smooth stone down. You see it drinking up the blood? I think. It could be too slow to see. Yes, early game blood magic requires a lot of waiting, because without any runes to soup it up, this blood altar is slow. No, it's living rock in this pack. Okay. Well, that just goes to show you, always check any eye, because sometimes the things you think you know, you don't. So, I am going to have to make some living rock. And I am actually probably going to have to make a Living Rock automation pretty soon, because I am going to need lots and lots of it. I was going to wait till AE for that, but there are ways to do it with just Botania. It's pretty easy, too, actually. Let's put all that down and let's just take a couple living rock for the moment. Oops. There we go. Now you can see the blood draining. Sucking it up into that living rock. And it didn't take very long at all. But you need to take it out as soon as, it, as you got the slate you want, because it will keep on going after a few moments. So, we take that slate, we take our weak blood herb, and we go and we grab some glass. And there we are, divination sigil. This is kind of our wrench tool. Or at, at least it's kind of a... It's kind of a base tool of blood magic. You see that little UI element over on the left there? That is my current blood network. It is currently very nearly empty because I only put a tiny little bit of blood in my weak orb. But we can see it fill up pretty quickly. You see here that now that I'm holding it in my hand on Wayla, I can see the amount of life points inside my altar. 
and I can right click it to get it down in the chat as well. It tells me the altar's tier and all that. We'll talk about that in a little bit. You can see that if I tick my if I tick my pokey stick, 95.18. So okay, I'm getting 200 LP per poke, and the altar can only hold 10,000 points at the moment. So I can't. I shouldn't keep on poking myself. I can keep on poking myself. It'll keep on hurting me, but I won't gain any magic from it. So we made our weak blood orb. Next quest would want me, well, okay, I already made a slate, but I guess I didn't register it. So, and there, you see it draining out. Oh, I guess that now that I have the divination sigil just in my inventory, I can see that on, let's, let's test that. Let's, if I throw it out, yeah. So as long as you have that sigil in your inventory, Wayla will show it to you. That's neat, I didn't know that. Okay, we have a blank slot. And more blank slots. It's very good that we're getting those as quest rewards. So, as you can tell, the altar, just as it is, is kind of lame, and it cannot do much. In order to upgrade it, we need to do things with this massive structure that I have built all around it. Namely, we need to start replacing some of the stones of it with blood runes. Now, the runes do all sorts of different things. These base ones just, if you place them, they will increase the tier of the altar. Um, you see that on Wayla it says tier 1. If I place if I place enough blood runes down, it will go up to tier 2, and the altar needs to be a certain tier in order to do some things. Like, for example, I think the next tier of blood orbs that we could make, we would need a tier 2 altar in order to craft, otherwise it would just refuse. But there are special runes that you can craft as well. There's things like augmented capacity, which increases the amount of blood that the altar can hold. There's dislocation, which allows it to push blood into your blood network faster. Um, or is that orb? No, I think orb increases the amount that an orb can hold. Um, superior capacity is just like augmented capacity, but better. Acceleration, um, which I think increases... There, there's lots of runes and they do lots of things, okay? Trust, trust me on that. The big ones are going to be for um, increasing the speed of how fast the altar can process items and increasing the value of the blood sacrifices we will be making. Both of ourselves and eventually of others. So, we need to make these eight blood runes, and for that I am going to need 16 slates. So I am just going to get a little bit of baseline automation going. I left my blood orb in the crafting table over there, didn't I? I should put one by the blood altar anyway. Yeah. I am going to make a little bit of baseline automation. Just a very, very simple thing. I am going to put a hopper on the side of my blood altar. Now, the hopper will inject items into it, but the altar will try and process them kind of as a batch. So, I think that in order to process this living rock into a slate, it needs a thousand LP. Good, that hasn't changed. So if I put three living rock in there, it will not give me slates until it has fed all three of them, all 3,000 LP. So if I max out my blood altar, I can only process up to 10 at a time before I have to refill it again. 
and you do not want to feed it more than it can do because if the blood altar does not have enough blood in it and the crafting is not complete then the item will gradually begin to lose its infusion so either either feed it either only feed it enough that the altar can handle it at a time and refill it completely or you need to babysit it and feed it blood as it sucks it out just to keep it topped off but yes i put this hopper on here and you see they all pile on into the altar and 3000 lp later i will have my three slates now the other thing is that remember what I said, that if the slate sits in there for too long, then eventually it'll start sucking in more blood and trying to make itself the next tier of slate. I think that actually won't be a problem for the altar right now, because this is a tier 1 altar and I don't think it can make the tier 2 slates. Yeah, let's give it a moment and let's see. Yeah, you see it can't do it. But if we, yeah, see, Blood Altar Tier 2. So once we upgrade this thing to Tier 2, I'll ha if I want blank slates, I will have to take them out as soon as they're completed, else they will start trying to become reinforced slates. There are ways to prevent this, I do think. The big one would be to put a logistical sorter on it and program its filter for whatever I want at the moment so that it just pulls it out as soon as it's done. Actually, I don't want it there because then the crafting station would use the inventory there. Yeah. And I believe I saw that I do need smooth stone for this. So if I remember correctly, it was like that and like that and like that. Oh, I got too much smooth stone. Derp. Okay. So, the first tier of runes that we need to place down are just immediately around and under the altar. Just like so. And when I place the last of these down, the altar should take a moment, and then it becomes tier two. See it up there in Wayla? Yeah. That is all it takes to enhance the altar at first. And as we go on, I will be replacing these blood runes for more better functional runes. Oh, did it re register the... Ah, now it wants me to prove it by making a reinforced slate. Okay, that's easy enough. Just need a living rock and 3,000 LP. Yes. I have kind of constructed the blood altar to help me out with this as I go. So uh, down here on the next level, you see the... No, wait, this is the next level. All these blocks between the, the pillars here will also have to be runes. And on the level after that, I have the runes... Uh, blocked out like this. The blank ones will have to be blocks. The the bleached stone, the bleached bone stone bricks will... Yeah, I, I basically have it laid out so that I will know where I need to place things. Mm. Okay. Ah, and that gives us some speed runes. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Applied Arcana wants us to make Thomic Slates and Botanical Slates. I think these are alternate paths to the baseline runes that will allow me to expand the altar easy, more easily. Wants me to make the next thing of Blood Orbs. Wants me to... Make an elven knife? Hmm. 
basic sacrificial knife is good to start with, but sometimes you want something with a little more oomph. Augmenting the knife with botanical or thomic magic seems to make it much more powerful. Hmm. Anyway, speed isn't necessarily something you want straight away. Because if you are trying to do something expensive, you have to fight against that speed to keep the altar topped up. I think I'm going to leave this. Yeah, the claimer here, too. Okay, I've assembled a little simple altar automation here. I just have a logistical sorter on a chest. In this chest, I will keep at least one of every type of slate. And when I want to type a slate, I'll just program it into this logistical sorter. You can see that I have it programmed for blank now. So if I put in a living rock, then it should... Yes, it click clicks as soon as it is done. And then if I want the next tier, I can just take that and change the filter. And then it should take that out when it's done. So it's a little bit inconvenient. I have to program it each time, but it's not too bad. Just uh, wait for this to be done. So next up, I would just need to get either a constant source of blood, which won't happen for a while, or I would need to increase the storage capacity of my altar, and I can just chuck in tons of living rock and get whatever type of rune I want. And that will just be left there cooking while I do other things. So let's look at the next couple quests we need to do. It wants us to try out these botanical slates and thomic slates. Well, botanical slates, I looked up, are very, very easy. We can just take a bunch of stone and we can go over to one of our mana pools with it. And we just need to throw it in. It takes a little bit of mana, very, very easy. And as far as I can tell, the only use that these runes have is they allow you to basically skip the blank slate tier for getting reinforced slates and up, and it reduces the, the LP cost on that just a tiny bit. And it can be used to make these botanical runes, which, as far as I can tell, function exactly like blank blood runes. They don't upgrade the altar in any way, but they do serve as runes for increasing the tier of the altar. So they would be kind of the first thing that we put down when we just want to increase the tier of the altar and unlock more recipes, and we would gradually replace them for functional runes as the altar gets more and more powerful. Next, it wants us to make Thomic Slates, which, as far as I can tell, function in exactly the same way. It's just some stone, some thomium, and some essentia. So it's actually a little bit harder. It's a lot harder to make than these botanical slates. But you do get at least a couple of them per recipe, I guess. And uh, yeah, I don't think I would use these. But let's do it anyway just for the quest. So we need three stone, and we are going to need two thomium, which I should have up in my chest. It's going to be one in the center and one on each side. And the two thomium. Okay, that should register. Let's check the instability. Yeah, it's a really simple infusion. And what we need for Precantatio and some Vitae. Got Vitae, got Precantatio. Yep. Boop. Very simple, very easy infusion. Probably meant to be mass automated, but... I mean, quite frankly, the other one is just literally chucking stone in a mana pool. I mean, I can automate the altar. It can be done in this pack. But why would I just for this?
<sighs> anyway, let's see if the quest wants anything else. And runes. Okay, so it wants me to make botanical and thomic runes. So, yeah, that's just another infusion. More thomium. Simple enough. I love this mana pump so much. Or Essentia Pump, excuse me. Okay. Yeah, once again, that's two of those, a stone, and two Thaumium. Okay. Two of those. Two of those. And I need another piece of smooth stone, which I don't have here, damn it. There we go, Thaumic Rune. You see it looks pretty much just like a purple blood rune. Yeah. Let's, let's test this out. Let's go over here and let's just, um, actually, I think I can do this with, I think there's a way I can do this with the uh, Wand of Equal Trade. Doop. There we go. Yeah, see, it's pretty much exactly the same texture. It's just a purple color. And it keeps the altar at tier two. Yeah. See, the thing is, I think that these blood runes themselves have tons of base uses, and I don't think that Thaumic rune... Oh, I didn't check it. I did not check it. Let's check it. Uses. Nope, it's not or dictionaried with regular runes. So, yeah. I pretty much would never make these. But hey, it's for a quest. Is this thing set to, yeah. So might as well cook this thing up. Okay. Now let's make that botanical one. That one I think is much, much easier. Yeah, that's just some gold and some stone. Okay. Yeah, all in all, I think I think the botanical runes I might fill out the altar with just because they are so freaking easy. Yeah. And this is this and forming these reinforced slates are again the only use for these things, so botanical runes. Are these or dictionary with blood runes? No, they are not. Neat. Mm -hmm. And they actually have a unique texture. Yeah. I kinda like these. I think their color works pretty well with the uh with the bone stone I chose for the altar anyway. Yeah, I might I might make a ton of these. Of course, eventually the entire altar will be this default bloodstone color, because functional runes are effectively this with a pattern drawn on it. So maybe it'll be better just to go with blood runes from the start. But I guess we'll see. I guess we will see. That is the quest. That just gives me more of those runes. Lovely. Ah. The air sigil. The air sigil is good fun. Let's try this elven knife thing that I want. Let's see what that, what all that garbage is about. Because these are blood magic add-ons that I've never played with before. That it's, oh, I think I had a blank slate in there. Nope, I just had tons of living rock. Might as well move it all up to the slate chest. 
But yeah, all this arcane artery stuff I've never played with before. So let's let the quest book walk us through a little bit. So I wanted to make an elven blade. Elven knife. That's just a sacrificial knife and two elementium on the runic altar, okay? I'll make another Arthana real quick, and we'll do that. Wow. That was a tiny bit of mana in it. Okay, Elven Knife. Don't make you thorny, baby. Cute. Okay. So, um... I guess that maybe this is an improved sacrificial dagger. Okay, let's, let's check the quest book. Ah. Elementium from the Elzo Alfheim. Allow it to produce much more LP when used. 1,000 LP for one heart instead of 200? Oh, hell yeah. Next, it would want me to make the Thaumaturge's Razor. Um, more LP to 2,000. So it's the same exchange rate, just faster. Okay. Okay, that's, uh, that's nice. So I didn't need to make another Sacrificial Knife after all. I guess I'll just keep that first one as a backup then. Okay, so let's make that Thaumaturge's Razor just for the quest. Yeah, this is a sacrificial knife with two pieces of Thaumium. Okay, we don't get to keep a backup knife after all. Ooh, Warpy. Thaumaturge's Razor. Sexy. Okay, so is that the quest? Yes, it looks like it do. Ah, augmented capacity. These I actually want. Because, let's just replace these two. This will actually be functional. You see, it yeah, takes a moment. Each one of those adds a thousand capacity to my altar. Oh, and you see it draining a little bit? Altars have kind of an internal buffer, and I believe it's partially determined based on the overall capacity. So if you see your blood altar draining a little bit and you don't know why, it might be just be draining into the invisible tank. Um, so don't panic. Let's keep the Thaumaturge's Razor. All in all, I think this Elven Knife is what I'm going to use, because one heart is easier to count. 9, 10, 11. Yeah? No? What? Why you know? Why you know? You have the capacity. There you go. That was weird. Okay, giving it a glow. Wants me to make a tier 3 altar to make the next slate. Wants me to make an air sigil and wants me to make the next tier of orb. Okay, let's look at that air sigil. And it's just a reinforced slate. And we're going to need the tier 2 orb first. Okay, well I believe that the... Prentice's orb is just an emerald and some blood. And right now it's not enough blood to be challenging. So let's do that. I was expecting there to be more waiting around while I could work on AE2, but blood magic is proving to go by very, very quickly. Well... When it gets to upgrading to the next tier, well, when it gets to upgrading to the next tier of altar, I can just use those botanical runes, and it'll be very, very quick. Hmm. 